man's knowledge of the earth is a little like an ant on the surface of an apple who wants to understand the apple but cannot penetrate its skin. The skin of an apple, proportionately, is about as thick as the crust of the earth. A scientific project is underway, a project called Project Mohol, which hopes one day to drill a hole through the crust of the earth and to find out what's down there. Since it is thought that the crust of the earth is thinnest at points under the ocean depths, it is probable that the drilling will take place at some point deep under the ocean. The hole to the interior of the is developed by the petroleum industry in its search for oil. The mohole drill must go at least a mile deeper than the deepest hole ever drilled on land, and the special problems of drilling at sea will make the task much more difficult. But seagoing rigs like this have already shown the way. This ship, the Cus-1, with its 98-foot derrick, is a former naval vessel converted for offshore drilling. Here in the shallow waters of the Pacific Ocean off California, her drill teams are probing for oil, going about a mile deep into the ocean bottom below. To adapt equipment like this to the dramatic task of penetrating the very crust of the earth is a major operation. The drilling ship will have to be held in position above the hole in water over two miles deep through long periods of time, night and day, in fair weather and foul. The miles of drill pipe must be able to resist the wrenching forces of the ocean currents. There are many other hazards and problems. But the planners of Project Mohol, intent on finding out what's down there under the sea, believe that the obstacles can and will be overcome. The effort is going forward on several fronts at once. While one group of the scores of scientists involved studies the technical problems of drilling at sea, other groups are studying the ocean bottom at sites in both the Pacific and the Atlantic Oceans. The first oceanographic survey to help find the place where the hole may be drilled takes place in the Atlantic. 200 miles north of the island of Puerto Rico, scientists hope to find that the crust of the earth beneath the sea is thin enough to be pierced by the proposed drilling equipment. Under the continents, and even under an island like Puerto Rico, the crust of the earth is from 20 to 30 miles thick, but underneath the ocean, the crust may be as thin as four miles. The first layer is composed of soft sediments. Beneath that is dense, hard rock. Between this crust and the earth's mantle is the moho, the boundary between the crust and mantle, named for the Yugoslav scientist, Mohorovicic, who discovered it. No one knows much about the mysterious moho, and no one knows for certain what the mantle is made of. Now in the blue water off Puerto Rico, the research vessel Vima sails over the Puerto Rican trench. The Vima, a schooner specially equipped for oceanographic research, is staffed by scientists of the Lamont Geological Observatory of Columbia University. She is the leader of a four-ship expedition in search of Moho. It's a rugged, active life aboard the Vima. That's Dr. John Nape, scientific director in the rigging. Precision depth recordings, measuring the landscape far below, are made constantly as the Vima plows through the waves. By sending sonar signals down to the bottom at precise intervals and recording the echo of each signal as it returns to the ship, the precision depth recorder traces a profile of the ocean floor. Each ping of the echo sounder adds another point to the picture of the ocean floor far below the passing ship. Hidden in the darkness of the sea, the bottom of the ocean is as varied as the surface of the continents and on an even more majestic scale. It has gorges rivaling the Grand Canyon, mountains taller than Everest, plains as vast as the Russian steppes. Underneath the oceans, flooding half our world, drowned in eternal cold and darkness, is a land that conceals more mysteries than the moon. To obtain a sample of the uppermost layer of the ocean floor, 
the Vima heaves to north of the Puerto Rican trench. Sails come down and the scientists make ready for the delicate, strenuous coring operation. The 30-foot long piston coring pipe is in its rack along the rail. About three inches in diameter, the steel pipe has a sharp cutting edge at its bottom end for piercing through the ocean floor. The pipe is released and lowered into the water. At its top end, the pipe is equipped with a heavy lead weight and triggering mechanism to plunge the coring pipe into the bottom. Miles of cable unroll from the powerful winch amidships on the Vima, lowering the core through the sea. The echo sounder reflects the beginning of the descent, drawing a picture of a slender finger of steel as it probes the unknown. On deck, there's a two-hour wait for the corer to reach bottom. What kind of bottom will we find? Will the corer hit rock, or will it drive deep into the ocean floor to bring up new evidence of the Earth's history? The scientists gather around the tension indicator that will tell them when the pipe hits. The hit is made. The core plunges into the bottom. Now the winch winds in the cable with the coring pipe and its precious load. It took only seconds to drive its way into the bottom, but in those seconds it may have pierced through layers of sediment laid down over millions of years. The coring pipe finally reaches the surface. What will this sample reveal about this part of the ocean as a possible site for drilling the moho? The core barrel is hoisted into its rack along the rail. The fins and lead weight are removed. There's the end of the core in the barrel. The mud that still clings to the outside of the pipe offers the scientists the first clues to what's inside. Now the core is extruded. As the pipe is pulled along the trough, the piston inside pushes the core out, a section of the floor of the Atlantic, punched out of layers of sediments miles below, is clearly exposed to view on the deck of the Vima. Dr. Charles Drake examines the core. Scraping off small samples at intervals along the core, he makes a preliminary inspection of its contents. He files the samples temporarily on his arm. The sections of the core are stowed below. Dr. Drake tests a sample of the core between his teeth. It seems gritty. This suggests the remains of microscopic shells and skeletons which may form a record of centuries of deep sea life. This core represents 30 feet of sediments and reaches back about 9 million years. The first step of the Mohole project is to core completely through the sediments, through hundreds of millions of years. In the Lamont laboratories, the cores will be split open and analyzed. The color, content, and composition of the split open cores are clues to the history of the world. Sometimes the opened up core reveals clearly distinguished layers of sediment. 
each layer may have been laid down in one year or in 5,000 years, a timetable to be read by the skilled interpreter. At present, such cores are the only direct method of studying the bottom. Knowledge of the deeper layers rests on indirect methods, such as seismic recordings. Just as the pings of the depth recorder can produce profile pictures of the ocean floor, so it is possible with the much greater sound energy of underwater explosions to measure the thickness of the layers of rock beneath the floor. The four ships of the expedition now work as a team in making seismic recordings. From the Vima, Dr. Naif radios the day's instructions. Uh, the ship's in order south to north. Bear on 2136 minutes north. The research vessel Bear is from Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. The Hidalgo from Texas A&M University. And from Columbia's Hudson Laboratories comes the Gibbs. The Vima hoists signals. While one ship sets off underwater explosions, the other ships will listen. On this run, the Vima, Bear, and Hidalgo will take listening positions in a line 30 miles apart, while the Gibbs makes the firing run. Following a carefully plotted course, the Gibbs gets underway to drop high explosives into the sea. For listening, the Vima goes on silent ship. Auxiliary engines and generators are shut off. Scientists break out the hydrophones, supersensitive microphones encased in rubber, and lower them into the sea to pick up the distant explosions. The Vima's geophysical camera is ready and waiting to record the shots. Dr. Neef slacks the cable so the hydrophones will be floating free. Just before the shot, the camera is switched on. The sound of the explosion goes through the water and into the earth below. Sound waves travel faster in the deeper, more rigid layers. Even though the distance is greater, the sound waves traveling past the moho arrive at the listening ship first. Waves from the upper layers arrive later. Dr. Naif hauls in the hydrophones at the end of this round of firing, and the Vima scientists wait for the photographic record to be developed. The seismic record, still wet, is spread out for inspection. Comparing the speeds of these waves, oceanographers can determine the thickness of the layers of the Earth's crust. Ground wave one traveled beneath the moho and ground wave two through the deep crust. Comparison of these fast waves can reveal the depth to the moho. Far over on the record is the slow ground wave three, which traveled in the top sedimentary layer. Many such records analyzed in detail can produce a comprehensive picture of the structure of the Earth's crust. Now it's the Vima's turn to do the firing. She sails down the line of listening ships in a heavy sea to fire repeated shots that will help fill in the seismic records of this part of the Atlantic. Her auxiliary engines are set at full speed. A firing ship moves fast to escape from her own shots and to get in as many of them as possible in one day. The Vima is carrying 10 tons of high explosives. From three pounders up to regulation 300 pound Navy depth charges, they're ready on deck. Hello Gibbs, this is Vima. This is shot number 357, a Mark 8, 300 pound charge. Six foot fuse, burning time about 90 seconds. Your one minute warning, now. Five, four, 
over the side, over the side. The charge is over the side. The more rigid the layer, the faster sound travels. The fastest waves go past the moho and back to reach the listening ship. This is Vima. This is shot 415. Over the side, over the side. The charge is over the side. The firing goes on into the night. The expedition scientists want every minute at sea to count. The opportunity for gathering scientific evidence of many different kinds is a priceless one. As the day's firing ends at last, the scientists of the Vima meet on the afterdeck to plan the next day's work. Here off Puerto Rico is one possible site for drilling the mohole. The full interpretation of all the information gathered will take time. But in this preliminary survey stage, much has already been learned. The seagoing rig that will one day drill through the moho will add new direct evidence to our knowledge of the Earth. Somewhere down there, the drill may pass through the time and place of life's beginning. Down there is the record of the birth of our planet. And somewhere down there, perhaps, great unexpected discoveries are waiting to be made by the scientists, engineers, and technicians of Project Mohole. 